She embraces me, bringing herself closer. I could hardly have imagined myself doing this when I first met her inside the tower, but now it feels all but natural. No, it doesn't. This feels as natural as frozen pizza. This is not natural. See, <clears throat> she tries to put on like, you know, I'm a serious spy, and then you say one choice and suddenly it's like a light, a, a, a light switch goes off in her head. It's like, oh, no, oh, oh, I'm turned on now, I'm turned on. I'm a woman, I'm a woman, I'm a woman. I have no character, I'm a woman. Oh, Dougal, you're so sexy. Light switch. Just, uh, <clears throat> oh, well. Um... <laughs> And now we all look seven. Now, Dougal, what about you? Let's see what's under that cloak of yours. You'll probably find skin, at a guess. Huh, I've got nothing to hide except for some battle scars from goddess knows where. You really were something special back in the service. So this is a woman who knows I'm an unbound as well. <laughs> Jesus like, oh yeah, fuck it, I'll sleep with you. I'll uh, rise the beast from inside. Ugh, weird. Who knows, there might be quite a bit of power in there wanting to get out. No one really knows what an Unbound is capable of. I look how, I love, I'm completely apathetic, look at me. Her, she's sort of like looking lovingly into my eyes. Despair, but hope and love as well. Can we get tacos? Uh, it's just... No. <laughs> He's feeling like I am right now. Who cares about the damn service? What I want isn't one of your secret identities, Lamia. It's you. Dougal, do you really mean that? No. I mean, how could you forgive me for using you like that? Of course I f forgive you. Hmm. You were just following orders. It's really my fault this whole thing spiralled out of control. Don't blame, your, don't blame yourself, Dougal. If it wasn't for you, I would never have been able to do this. She embraces my waist, kissing me on the lips with true passion. I love it. Pretty full out to say that. <clears throat> we kissed, and it was really good. <laughs> oh, Lord. It arouses me in a way I haven't felt in ages. Yeah, Isaac just really wasn't putting in the shifts towards the end. I feel like... She's rekindled my desire for the human touch. Uh-huh. Oh, Dougal, I can't lie anymore. I want you so much. You haven't been exactly lying until this point about that, have you? I had an inkling. Our lips meet as we fall backwards onto the bed, knocking over the things on the shelves with a clatter. Her long brown hair drapes over me as I feel her silky skin running across my scarred chest. How am I supposed to believe you now? After all, you've been a bad kitty. Mm-hmm. I'll prove it to you. Please, just give me another chance. Well, you're not going to say no, are you now? Okay, but you'd better not be hiding anything else. Like, I don't know, your real name. Don't worry. I'll bear it all for you. This is for your eyes only. Understand? What? I was about to get my camera out. <sighs> I might as well return the favour. Are we about to get all not safe for work on someone's ass? I'm waiting. Be a good image. That's... Mm, Alright, we haven't seen him yet, but I'm sure it'll be fine. I sit up in bed, Lamia longingly getting her <laughs> charade back on as she catches her breath. I put my cloak and assorted other garments back on as well. It's actually rather cold inside this tower. It's cold! Wow! <laughs> this guy's a genius! Dougal, you're quite skilled for an amnesiac. Do what I can. Oh, I was a bit surprised myself. Maybe that's another hidden power of the Unbound. Really? A hidden power of the Unbound? Look at me, I'm like Peter Stringfellow in bed. <laughs> I highly doubt that. No, now that you mention it, it does make me a bit suspicious. The pretty sh I'm pretty sure that I won't find out anytime soon anyway. I should head back to the inn and calm Isaac down before he creates a ruckus. I turn around, but Lamia stops me, grasping my shoulder. Don't say be careful. Okay, okay. Thank you is as bad? Well, it's not as bad. It's slightly less worse. Dougal, thank you. I thought it was a useless endeavour to complete this mission, but now I realise how much you care about the other alchemists. 
perhaps you didn't become a top agent because of your power, but because you knew where the mission ended and people's lives began. Maybe so, I guess I just feel like making things right might pay me back someday, not that it already hasn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a shit payoff if that's really what you're waiting for. See you in the square, Dougal. I hope you're ready for me. This kitty sharpening her claws. <clears throat> Have you ever gone through a scene and just felt it's... <sighs> the thing is, is that this game up until then had been really good with its intrigue and mystery and who's this this and what's that and what's secretly behind this? And then there's just a crowbarred in sex scene. Like, no, oh, well, it's visual novel, you need to romance someone. I could have gone fine without romancing anyone in this game. It would have worked. Ah, <sighs> oh, well. I head back into town, making my way towards the inn. It seems like my time in Ice and Bar is coming to a close. Could this really be all there was to the nefarious crystal smuggler, or could they somehow make an appearance tomorrow? Upon arriving at the inn, I come across Isaac stuffing himself full of baked goods as usual. Do I suppose ever explode from eating too much? Perhaps I might know soon enough. Dougal, you're alive! <laughs> oh, comfort eating, was it? You expected me to be dead? What happened? How did you escape? Oh, come on, Isaac, you know me better than that. That Lamia, leaving you alone to fend for yourself against glacier bears, no less. Someone needs to teach her some proper manners. <clears throat> well, we should probably head to the square and prepare for a fight. Lamia might go easy on us, and it'll have to seem real. Sounds good to me, like old times, eh, Diggle? You got that right. This reminds me of that time. Are they not gonna say... No, okay. It, it, it's like that time, guys! That's it. The square is crowded at this time of day, but the job board seems to have nothing new. At least, that is, until I notice a lonely note affixed to the statue behind me. Puzzling over what it could be, I walk over and read it. It seems to be written in a neat cursive hand. There is no identifying information or anything else save for the black text on white paper. Prepare to die? What is this, some kind of problem? When the land alights with fire and the sky is tainted red, shepherds delight. No, oh, that doesn't rhyme, sorry. Fight not your desire, nor the yearning in your head. <clears throat> okay, so let the inner thing in me. You may incur her ire with the chaos of your stead, but to deny your fire is to live amongst the dead. <clears throat> See, and this is why I don't write poetry, folks. Mine's much worse than that. And it says at the bottom, translation of ring three. But that's, that's impossible. No one can translate the ancient language. Either this is a hoax, or we may have a miraculous find on our hands, Dougal. <clears throat> Forget about it. What is this poem about? Does it somehow take relate to the Red Moon? I believe it speaks about the moon glow. However, I'm not too sure about the rest. I'm not either, but I do have a sneaking suspicion. Suddenly, my mind is catapulted back to the strange dreams I've been having recently. Could it be possible that something was causing them? Could whoever have caused them to be the one who had been taking these notes? It might not be Magistus, but it's possible we have a very different kind of master on our hands. Someone who can read the language of the ancients. That's all well and good, but finding them will be another story entirely. We have zero information about who could have written this. True, and I'll take the rest of the day to canvas town taking handwriting samples. I guess we'll have to leave this one be for now. Just like that. Just then I hear the town's bell tower ring... <laughs> The town's bell tower ringing the alarm. Some sort of mayhem has broken out further down the street and most of the peoples are running the other way. <clears throat> the monster! The monster's here! Says person I quite... I, I see you quite a lot. Out of the way! I'm too young to die! Quite smiley though. A number of the town guards run in my direction. You can't come inside the perimeter, it's dangerous. Are you kidding me? Dangerous is my other name. Middle name. Middle name. I push past them, oh, and they just let me go, and towards the chaos. There, Torrin and a group of his guards are spread out trying to hit Fail. Should I say, hitting him and failing miserably. <clears throat> Gah, he's too strong. Fall back and wait for the alchemist to arrive. You idiot, keep swinging those things and he'll break through the armor eventually. Faye swings his claws and knocks one of the guards halfway across the square. I know that Lamia wouldn't truly injure anyone, but she's still having a field day. Where are those damned alchemists when you need them? I'm right fucking here! Did someone call? 
<laughs> oh wow, we come in as a fucking motley group. Finally, I see the alchemists arrive from every direction. Every direction, that pretty f pretty much firmly looks like one to me. It looks like they were racing to get there first, but somehow they managed to show up at the same time. Ha, <clears throat> I knew it was Faye. Something didn't seem right about that creature. This must be a trap set by Magistus. Good heavens, this cannot be right. Faye, you do not truly wish to hurt us, do you? Blasted clockworks. Yeah, ah, oh, fuck. That's so, uh, what's his face? Blasted cockworks. Cockworks. That's something altogether different. That really is not safe for work. Something Lamy would enjoy. Blasted clockworks. Yeah, can I trust Imperials or their inventions? Stand back, humans. I can handle this. Kim Karan is a huge blast of power that sends Faye flying backwards. However, he lands on his feet, shaking it off. Roar. That was not enough, was it? Well then, face the full power of a Ferran alchemist. She removes a vial from her pack that strikes me as familiar. Could it be the one I tampered with before? Ginka charges herself with the energy contained within the vial. However, it begins to glow a reddish color and the surrounding area starts to heat up dramatically. This isn't... Just then, Kimka's fur begins to burst into flame. She screams, falling to the ground, rolling back and forth. <laughs> I am on fire. Someone help. One of the guards rushes over, tamping out the flames with his uniform. <laughs> that was priceless. Google, you could have killed her. Look, she's fine. Maybe a little singed, but fine. Oh, for goodness sake, move out of the way so the real alchemist can do their job. Kimka stumbles away from Faye's angry swipes as Zoltan lifts the hand cannon onto his shoulder. Take this! <clears throat> Zoltan's hand cannon starts to glow steadily, the sound of gears moving in perfect unison from echoing from inside. He grins as he aims the cannon at Faye. Fantastic! Prepare to die, you mechanical oof! <clears throat> when he presses the trigger, an explosion is released from the barrel that sends both Zoltan and the cannon flying backwards into the crowd. It shakes my eardrums even from my vantage point. <clears throat> that was close. Zoltan slumps to the ground, the cannon looking irreparably damaged. If that cannon had exploded, half the crowd would be dead by now. There'd be such a worry lord. Look, two things have happened. Have either of them result in anyone's death? No, then shut up, Isaac. Plus, we're evil. It doesn't matter if it does. Ah, it's smooth sailing from here. Barzul runs in with his massive sword, swinging it menacingly. However, he's clearly aching from the fight, and it only takes a short time before he gets tired and has to drop it to the ground. Damn Torrin, what was he thinking? On closer inspection, it seems that his body is, is covered in welts and bruises. It seems he must have had quite the battle. Looking at it even makes me start hurting. <clears throat> Don't you think that was a little too much? Nah, he can take it. I can I fight the monster like this, but if we're all down, then ho! Oh. Isaac, you had better wait here. Why can't I ever charge valiantly into the fray? Because you're a fucking ice bat. If you did it, we'd all be dead. As I walk into the centre of the square, all of the guards have long since abandoned their posts. Even Torrin looks like he's just about had enough. In front of me, I can see Faye more fearsome than ever seen him before. Steam blasts from behind him as he prowls towards me. It seems that his capabilities are very different when outside of the tower's narrow confines. More than a mere disguise, this clockwork armor is a powerful weapon. I found myself wondering even more about the circumstances of its creation and in resemblance to the monster. It didn't seem like Lamia was very comfortable controlling such a beast, but perhaps someone with an affinity to Sabercats might even enjoy it. Faye! It seems there's a dead silence in the square, only now do I notice that a crowd of people have gathered around to watch me. The other alchemists slowly begin to get to their feet. Faye! I know you can hear me. Please, Faye. Please stop this and listen to me. Faye shudders, still on all fours. He looks up at me, clearly pained. Lamia is doing quite a good job so far. Why do I have a feeling that it's not actually Lamia in there at the moment? This is just something different. Well, the way this game's going, you never know. D Dougal? Faye? It's, it's me, Dougal. I know you're in there, Faye. You have to fight it. H help it. It hurts so much. I know that your old master only wants you to be a weapon against alchemists, but you don't have to do that anymore. Think of all the fun times we had together. I could be your new master, Faye. 
Faye makes a whimpering sound, almost like crying. I glance over to the other alchemists, and I surprised to see that even the guards are standing stock still, surprised by this sudden turn of events. Faye. Faye want new master very much, but Faye cannot stop. Faye whimpers again, his voice dropping to a whisper. This is going rather well.